Hello and welcome. This is Head and Shoulders, where we cover athletes, performances, and otherwise that are head and shoulders above the rest. Thank you all for uh, coming here to this video. We got some stuff today. We're going to be talking about a couple of different uh, topics. One of them, namely, how, uh, you know, Great Britain, they need to be coughing up the metal to China. And you're like, wait a minute, wait, 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 what metal are you talking about? <laughs> well, even though you can't see the full uh, picture here on the left, on this left side here, you, you get the picture. It says, CJ Uja, British Olympic silver medalist, suspended after testing positive test for banned substance. Womp womp. Is this a little bit of karma? Hey, look, it's Philip. Is this a little bit of karma? Hey, hey, Great Britain. Hey, Relay Team. Is this a little bit of karma for all the times you didn't use equipment outside of the world uh, championships and Olympics and everything? to get the USA suspended out of there, DQ'd and everything, to always challenge when the USA is in the same heat as you. It's like an obsession. You're just trying to get the USA disqualified every time because you don't do it with everybody else. Now you're starting to spread the love out to other people. But you, you guys obsess about reviewing the races now it's kind of here because you know if this was a u.s athlete on the a sample just think about blessing okabari that would have been blown up all over the place y'all already know if okabari was an american you know how much this would be run it'll be running the news she'll have a mug shot this guy will have a mug shot like he he robbed somebody or something like that it, it, he looked like a grade a criminal and actually great britain right now is actually surprisingly quiet you know what they normally do now i did go to this, this guy's instagram and you know what uja did he cut off his first five posts on his instagram now don't start going there and harassing the guy now but there was some people it was one post that said shaking my head and at first i was like hey you want to come on for an interview and i was like nah it's wrong time and he'll think i'm asking him about this although i just wanted to ask him about the hard work that he put in because at the end of the day real talk real talk jokes aside these athletes do have a lot of pressure here. I can understand why some athletes are using these. But here's another question. Do y'all know how many, uh, and I'm going to go into the details here for a second, but just off the top of your head, pop quiz. Do you know how often an NBA player is busted? An NFL player is busted. MLB player is busted. Now, what I was told and what the NBA brags about is that they got a better testing system than um than the MLB, the Major League Baseball, and the National Football League in the in the USA. They brag about having a better one. I think it's even more stringent in track and field. But look, here's an article right here that says, does NBA have a problem with PEDs, performance enhancing drugs? And we have athletes here. Um, it says at first glance, mere three suspensions may not seem to be much in roughly a 400 50 player league, there have been only 11 instances of a player being suspended for violating. Now, they don't get banned. They just get some, a, a couple of game suspension. Since the end of 2008, uh, 2018, 2019, the league has issued 25 game suspensions to uh, issue 25 game suspensions to last season's number one overall pick, blah, 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 and those people, right? They gave them a 25 game suspension. Now, you know how many games they play during a regular season? That ain't nothing. All right? 25 game suspensions. And then they give them a fine and stuff like that. Now, there have been only 11 uh, instances since uh, for violating NBA and MBPA anti-drug policy since 2007. Now, you see, that's since 2007. That's the complete list right there. But there are other people that basically say out of a scale of one to 10, there is a seven on how many players are using performance enhancing drugs. I'm going to get in that in another video. Okay. Because we don't look at the NBA or NFL or something like that as riddled with drug cheats. Now, some of that is built into the NFL. That's how some people talk about it, but that isn't like, Oh, it's tur turning people away. And I think this talk and obsession with drugs, I didn't even want to cover this at first, but the obsession, obsession with performance enhancing drugs with athletes here. Now, I understand if you use something like this and it comes out 
and it's it's definitely a positive you get your medal stripped that's what happens because you did it at you got caught at the olympics now if it's during the regular season we got to do some kind of time or meat based suspension because it is kind of suspicious how an athlete can miss three drug tests right and they aren't suspended with more uh uh impunity compared to somebody else like Nasser. She got to run in Doha and she missed her three tests before Doha. A little bit suspicious here. There were some other athletes. I think Coleman, didn't he have some? A little bit suspicious, but I don't know about Coleman. So that part, I'm not going to say something on right there. I did mention it now, but I'm not going to go into detail. Now here, it says uh, the Athletics Integrity Union showed that a presence or use of prohibited substance Osterine in S23, which they're supposed to simulate testosterone. Uh, it's a use of it. They showed the presence or use of it, right? Now, um, he won the 100 meter British Championships in June. Okay. Um, he also was um, a second place, a silver medalist in the four by one. Now, with that being said, okay, you have to go through the A sample and the B sample. They said Uja can request analysis of B sample kept for storage while the A sample is analyzed and should that confirm the adverse analytical finding, AAF, the case will be referred to anti-doping division of the court arbitration, all right? So basically, you can't necessarily suspend somebody officially until the B sample comes back. They collect two. There have been athletes that had only the A sample. Mo Farah was uh, tested positive for something, I think, in his A sample. Or he jumped out of a window or something like that. I don't know. Something something long. Somebody tell me and correct that one. Um, uh, there was somebody that jumped out of a window. No, that was a Kenya athlete that jumped out of a window. And then Mo Farah missed a test or something like that because he said he had to go to the bathroom. And they, then they said he didn't show up again. And I'm like, what? That was kind of weird. Um, but Bernard Lagat of the United States, former Kenyan, ran for the U.S. Um, and everything like that. He had a an A sample that tested positive. That was hush-hush in the U.S., right? It wasn't his B sample. Now, if his B sample, man, I think he might have been drugged through the mud. Now, here's why China needs to get their medal. You know where China is? They're fourth place. I would not be surprised if Chinese media start rolling and hammering this athlete and say, yo, give us our medal. We got bronze now. Upgrade us. They're like, hey, test that B sample ASAP. Give us our stuff in three to four days or however long it takes to test that sample. Give us our stuff right now. Now, it's kind of weird right here that now see, this is why, because it's Britain right now, when Bernard Lagat tested it, that was an exception. An American that got it and they kept it under the rug. It was an article or two written about it, but it really wasn't there. Now, this is an article or two that's written about it is after the Olympics. In my opinion, this is what I think is going to happen. That a, a bunch of athletes after the fact of the Olympics are going to be suspended. And then the name of this Olympics, it might be tarnished uh, with drug use or something like that in athletics. I don't know about other sports, but in athletics. Then people are going to say, see, I told you in, 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 in COVID's land. People were using performance and drugs because nobody was testing them. Hey, you know what? That could have been the case. It looks like in all sports across the board that there are more, way more athletes that get caught that are using performance enhancers. So at this point, I'm going to need y'all to settle down. But since he got caught, since he was the bozo, if he does get confirmed. Now, I can't call him a bozo. Can't call him a bozo unless his B sample comes through. Because even Okabari B sample didn't come through yet. They still got her provisionally banned. Now, it's kind of funny. He got the run. He's not immediately stripped of the medal. Isn't that funny? He's provisionally banned. She got provisionally banned, and then her uh, time was there. Now, they're provisionally banned, and at this point, they still got Great Britain's uh, mark up here. Shouldn't, in the time being, since you're provisionally banned, same logic with Okabare, since she couldn't run, how about you take this mark off until it gets confirmed? Now, you don't pass out the medal yet until the B sample, but if she couldn't run, why couldn't she run then? See, this is see, you see how Britain is doing this in the Olympic Committee? They ain't being even handed or anything. You provisionally banned, that means you're as good as banned. Take this mark off, upgrade China to third place for right now until the B sample comes back. 
See, we got to use your own logic against you. You have lost and failed Olympic Committee, World Athletics at this point because you aren't being consistent. You're saying it's after the fact we're going to have to wait for the decision. You didn't wait for Okabara. You took her out. You said, boom, she can't run now. Just because now they have run already, take the time off. It's the same thing. Eliminate the time. Take Eliminate the time. Now, I've done bits and pieces, and I've covered – uh world athletics in the past or about a track league and in my uh last one or two videos i directly did it with like an 18 team league and everything in my opinion i think most of the events should be uh cut there are 44 individual events that are uh, take place at the world athletics uh championships and then three relays now because now we have the mixed relay i think that should be cut to under 20 like drastically cut to under 20 and we just got to go to the chopping block at different events. Now, because it's a track league, that means the Olympics still exist. The world uh, athletics still exist, but the track league could be like an NBA an NFL uh, 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 football and FIFA, like right there in Europe and everything and how it is in the U S and you can have your own major league soccer is in the U S then they have their own in Europe. They got their own leagues in Europe, right? So, you can do different league track and field leagues in different countries. Now, um, I did a little bit of breakdown. Do you guys want me to do a full breakdown about my opinion about that? I was just told that another individual that he posted that up. Now, people are going to think I'm copying, but you should see my very first video on this channel where I said there should be a track and field league. I've been talking about this with some people uh, in USATF. I don't got the pool that other athletes do. I'm not a, um, I'm not a top ranked athlete. I wasn't uh, the top ranked coach there. I happened to be an announcer that announced that's a very big meets, right? Uh, I coached at different uh, athletes and everything like that. And I've seen a lot of these pros uh, that are running now, right? I may not know all of them. I know a few of them, but hey, I don't got the same pool, but hey, I could put these ideas out here for somebody that does have that pool. Or if I eventually start putting my money where my mouth is and start shilling out the millions that it'll take, then we can start doing that. You get what I'm saying? So do you guys want me to cover it? Because look, here's the Olympics. I'm going to do this in another video, but let's talk about it here. Here's the prize money that was going, that was going out um, for individuals and relays. Now you got to divide this with the relay team and the alternates. Don't forget that, right? So you get $20,000 more here, uh, $10,000 more here in the same uh, basically for bronze for some reason, but it's a thousand dollars more, a little bit here. I don't know why bronze is the same in eighth place. Bronze and eighth place are the same amount of money, but the other ones aren't. I would think that bronze, you know, get like 2000 extra or something. It's kind of weird that bronze for the relay team is like, oh, you get punished. I don't know, but you got to divide that with your relay team. So it's not 80,000 per person. It's 80,000 for the relay and you got to divide it up for the individuals and y'all got to fight over with that. You could say, well, we ran the final, we did the two rounds. And so we get more money because we did the two rounds or the prelim semis, final, whatever semis and finals right now. Did you know that the Olympics athletes get paid? Nothing is based on what the countries do. Great Britain pays diddly squat. They want you to volunteer your body and soul. The Olympics want people to go through potentially life altering injuries that can occur in the pole vault. Can occur in the uh, javelin because you know that some people have gotten hit with that javelin at some points, particularly in the long jump area, in triple jump area, or in gymnastics. Think about other sports too. You're telling me they can go injure themselves fatally or drastically and they getting paid nothing, not even gold play. You can't, you're telling me this? Look, Tokyo Olympics cost 15.4 billion US dollars. They saying, what else can they buy? I really don't care. I, my goal, I would like to be a billionaire myself. So I don't see a problem with what else can they buy? Like, hey, look, I got a goal. I'm going to be using that money for to help out people with life extension technology and other things and probably some track and field leagues and whatever else I would like to do, right? So $15.4 billion, the most expensive Olympics there. Now, that's how much it costs. How much was their profit here? right? How much was their profit? Uh, where did they, how did I see the profit? Let me just do the control here. Profit. Um, basically, I can't find it right now. I don't want to make this uh, a subject for that.
but the profit for the IOC, an Italian, um, no, Swedish company, right? The uh, International Olympic Committee, they made between three and four billion dollars, right? Oh, here it is. Switzerland based International Olympics Committee uh, holding the Olympics, even without fans, assured broadcasting rights income of three to four billion dollars. The IOC is essentially a sports and entertainment business. Of course, essentially, it is a business. And almost 75% of its income is from selling broadcast rights with a, with another 18% from sponsors. So basically, the reason why y'all can't see certain events and see certain things is because they're giving the broadcast rights, and that's a lot of freaking money. Now, um, it says the organizers raised $3.3 billion from domestic sponsors. Okay. Um, so, yeah. I'm going to cover this and I'm going to break down how the track and field league needs to be here because right now we got athletes depending, they're running their hearts, their souls and everything out. And obviously the fans, you're not maybe familiar with all of this, but they don't get paid diddly squat for doing that. Diddly squat. Huh? You telling me I'm going to go to the Olympics. Like as a kid, I'm looking at that like, Oh yeah. Yeah. But as I'm an adult, you can't get me to come out here to volunteer to announce at nothing. I will refuse the job. Oh, but sir, you can announce with the president standing there. Um, no, pay me my money. Run me my money. Run me my checks, man. You are not about to get me to do that. I will. I would be an athlete that avoided the Olympics. Now, unless I thought I was top athlete, that's the only exception. Like I'm like, yo, I'm running the world championships or something, and I'm going to get that sponsorship money, and I think I'm going to finish in that top three spot because, you know, medal appearance fees and stuff. Other than that, what you got me running at this Olympics for? And I ain't getting diddly squat. And I got to depend on my country giving me some money, a boost, right? Or I got to depend on other politics that happen. Or I got to depend on uh, a sponsorship maybe picking me up. So I don't get gold. My life don't get changed like what happened to the uh, shot putter, right? I don't get gold at the moment. I got it because drug cheats got disqualified or whatever, but my life didn't change at the moment because I didn't get gold. Like, so what does that got to do with me? This is how I'm looking. I'm looking like this. You get what I'm saying? So we're going to break down how this league is going to be formed. And we're going to need people like this woman right here. We're going to need people right here. Let's let load it up. Here go Richardson. We need a personality like that that comes in. Yeah, some people may not like her, but that drama is good enough. That is good. We need some more people that, that are young and that has a drive and everything in them. Because I think A Thing Mo has something there. You can kind of see it from her um, from her interviews. It's like, man, I ain't got asked this question so many times. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, whatever. And we need some of that attitude. As she gets older, it might show some more. I think that needs to show a little bit more. What do y'all think? What do y'all think? Then we need the more cool, calm, collected. She's going to put her business in. We need an Allison Felix out there. She ain't really too noisy or anything like that. Hey, look, she does what she needs to do. She go out there. But we don't need too many athletes that are just there. They do that nervous track and field side to side, Bob. Not all athletes do that, right? We need some people out there, okay? So this is how we can do it. I'm going to say a little bit here about the league. You get somebody like a Usain Bolt. You get somebody that got the drip, that comes out there, that got a personality. Because you know what? The marathon is starting to get more people because of this man right here, Elliot Kipchoge. He's been doing things that other athletes haven't been doing. He said, hey, I'm going to go up to the marathon. Something special is going to happen. He said, yo, I got this. Don't worry about it. So when it comes to that, Hey, I ain't freaking worried. I am not worried at all when it comes there. We can split this up into 18 teams, have a three-team matchup every single time. Every weekend, we can have a three-team matchup on one day. We can have all of this done within a two- to three-hour period of time. That satisfies the sponsors. That satisfies enough for the um, – for the because, look, this is what I'm looking at people like uh, – Come on now. Yeah, McNeil, she got the perfect thing. Like, I'm looking over here. I'm confused at how we got all of this money that's coming in, and these athletes ain't getting paid. So, in my opinion, middle finger to the Olympics because that's not important. I want to treat the Olympics how the N N NBA was treating the Olympics. Like, oh, okay, cool. I can go there. That's going to help me out, whatever. But the most important, where my money, my bread and butter is coming from, 
And what I need to not be injured for is my track and field league. I'm going to make sure I run this track and field league and I'm getting money. Now, the hardest thing with this is, to be honest, the hardest thing is going to be getting people like this woman right here or other athletes that are top athletes already. You're going to have to catch them a little bit younger. What's the incentive if they're going to take a big cut, a pay cut in their uh, pay initially to come out and run this drag and field league? It's like, okay, I'm getting this prize money for Diamond League and you offer me $50,000 because that, that'll be like my base pay. That's what I would like to have a goal, like $50,000, like three to four, maybe six max uh, team members of each event in uh, each one of the events, especially the, the uh, sprints. You got like athletes that are there. What happens if you get an athlete that's injured? You got to have a bench player. That's basically what I would set it up as. You get a bench player out there. You get your uh, main athletes. Maybe it's two or three main athletes. If it's two, then you got some backups right there that will shuffle and, and go there. We get the point system down and everything. I'm not going to break everything down here, but I have budgeted it, budgeted it out. Not with 18 teams. No, you can't do under 20 million with 18 teams with the amount of the people there. At first, I had that like, OK, we're going to have five to six teams or something along those lines. And then it wasn't uh, that same amount of athletes or whatever. Um, but I, I, I can see it being between 20 and 30 million dollars uh, between that track and field league. I have a stadium idea that I budgeted it out to. um under 15 million dollars now this was done back in 2012 when i did that now for inflation it's probably going to be a little bit higher but the tracks just to let you all know here i i looked at this now we got to break we had to break this down where is it at um doha here it is right here so for a uh, $4.5 million cash plan investigated by judges. Oh, wait a minute. This isn't the one I was looking for. Here it is. This is when uh, they, it was a, a, um, a bank that put up, I think it was $30 million right here, a Qatari bank right here that put up $30 million. Now the 7 million that you see here difference is the 7 million was given out to be uh, being offered to provide tracks in 21 federations currently lacking them. So that means 21, I guess, federations, AKA countries that lack those tracks. Okay. If you can use $7 million to build a track, are those high quality tracks? What are they? From what I have understood is that most of these tracks like the Mondo track or the one that is, I forgot the company's name that provides the, you could basically pour it on. Mondo is you have the, the boards or whatever, and you roll it out. That's the difference. The one in Oregon and many NCAA tracks, those are poured in. It's literally poured in, and then it solidifies on those tracks, and they can even out the surface. Now, that or something like that, sports agencies and um, like a Planet Fitness or a 24-hour fitness, it was something else that had a track. And I looked at how much their building costs, and I'm like, why are these buildings for these uh, basketball arenas or other things costing so much. And I think it's probably because of the name behind it and what they're, they're uh, up in the price. Cause when I look at these smaller sports and fitness companies that have a track that have all of this equipment in and have basketball courts inside of them, I'm like, eliminate the basketball court, eliminate all of this stuff. And you gut it out and you basically set it up for a track and field. Uh, really not that much. I looked at some of them, 200 something thousand dollars. Once again, in 2012 dollars. So with that being said, we use a million dollars on a track, use a facility that's there. Uh, it could be open air, whatever, air conditioning, sound system. I, I kind of budgeted that out. Now, let me know if you guys want me to go into complete detail about how we going to get these athletes paid, how a track and field league can be doing here. Or if we don't have a track and field league in the beginning, what we can do is like a boxing type of style ranking system where they already have world athletics ranking and we hype the mess out of these athletes. What do you guys think about that? Let me know your opinion in the comment section below. You came here for uh, China getting their medal and then you left with the ideas and a little bit of the ideas of the track and field league. Like I said, in my other videos, I sprinkle it here and there. And I've been doing it since I started this uh, YouTube channel. You just go to my YouTube channels and you can do it. But if you want me to do a full out complete one, I still won't reveal everything. 
Obviously, there are other people that are going to go there. If they do it, that's fine. I won't stop me from doing one. If I want to do it in the future, the more the merit. You compete and let the best man or woman or organization win. That's the way I look at it at this point, just like track and field. Let the best athlete win. Let the uh, best plan win. Unless it's like, hey, you know what? Somebody reaches out to each other and they do it. Now, I ain't got the pull or uh, that resources or connections that anybody else has that are uh, athletes or coaches and stuff like that. Hey, you know what? Cool. These things aren't as expensive as they seem on paper for people that have all of the money and everything like that. But it would be a little bit misguided for one person or entity to ever sponsor something out of their pocket, you know, because that's not how businesses are run. Sure, somebody can do an investment. What if the investment fails? You don't want to be the one that's on the hook for a $20 million bill, right? And that's only just one year. Think about two, three, four, five, right? You say, all right, let's just say it's 20 million a year. Let's just say it like that. Instead of 20 million based on two, three, four, five years, right? Okay, that's 20, 40, 60, and it goes up. And then you, it's like, okay, I just spent $200 million. I got billions of dollars, but I just lost $200 million and I burned it up. No, what you would do is you would get one person doing this. You get some companies putting in some money there. And then at the end of the day, maybe you put $20 million up and then it was $200 million altogether. And so you gave 10%, right? But anyway, I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace.